Sairam children, so we are back again with another session of English revision. And today we are going to do active English revision and composition revision. Okay. I hope you all are having your rough notebooks with you. Yes. So open your rough notebooks, write today's date, and we can begin with the revision. Okay. So let's begin. Select the correct answer to join the sentences. Okay. Select the correct answer to join the sentences. Now here, two sentences are given to us. We have to join them. So from the option, which is the option that we will select so that we can join the sentence. Okay. The sentences are, they watched the men. They were building a road. They watch the men they were building a road these are the two sentences we are going to join them they watch the men dash a road they watch the men dash a road the options given are building and built building and built now children you have to select the correct option from this so that you can join these two sentences now think and tell me which is the correct answer here. Yes, they watch the men building a road. Yes, they watch the men building a road. The first sentence we have taken it as it is. They watch the men. What were the men doing? They were building a road. So I have not taken they were. I'll just take the verb building a road. They watch the men building a roof. Clear? Let's move to the next one. I could hear someone. He was playing the piano. I could hear someone. He was playing the piano. These two sentences I'm going to join in. I could hear someone dash the piano. I could hear someone dash the piano. Now the options given are Played, playing. The two options given to us are played and playing. Now tell me which is the correct option that you will select to join the sentences. I could hear someone dash the piano. Yes, I could hear someone playing the piano. I could hear someone playing the piano. Clear? Understood children? I hope it's clear and I hope you all are writing it down. Okay? Now let's move to the next one. We could smell something. It was burning. We could smell something. It was burning. Now we're going to join these two sentences. We could smell something. Dash. We could smell something dash. The options are burnt or burning. Burnt or burning. Yes, we could smell something burning. We could smell something burning. Clear? Let's move to the next one. Now, Select the correct answer to reply using almost in the sentences. Okay? A question is given to you. You have to reply. Your reply, you have to write it using the word almost. Okay? Now let's see. Options are given to you and you're going to select the correct option. One second. Okay, so let's begin. Have you done your homework yet? Have you done your homework yet? Have you done your homework yet? The answer should be no, but dash. No, but dash. Now, in the dash, what is it that I'm going to write? I have almost done it. I haven't done it. I have almost done it. I haven't done it. Which is the correct option? Think and tell. 
Have you done your homework yet? No, but I have almost done it. Yes, I have almost done it. Why have I selected this answer? Because there is a word but here. Beautiful. And when do we use but? When we are contradicting. There are two contradictory answers. First I said no. Right? And then I'm saying I have almost done it. That means almost over. Only little is left and I finish it up. That's what you're saying. No, but I have almost done it. Clear? Understood? Let's see the next one. Have you eaten the ice cream yet? Have you eaten the ice cream yet? No, but what should the answer be? I have almost eaten it. I haven't eaten it. Have you eaten the ice cream yet? The answer would be no, but I have almost eaten it. Yes, but I have almost eaten it. Clear? Let's go to the next one. Select the correct answers. She asked the teacher, dash a new book. The options are for, off. Yes, which should be the correct option. She asked the teacher, dash a new book. She asked the teacher for a new book or she asked the teacher of a new book. Which should be the correct option? Yes, F-O-R, for. So let's select for. She asked the teacher for a new book. Yes, let's go to the next one. Take dash your books and turn to page 40. Take dash your books and turn to page 40. The options are O-U-T, out or I-N, in. Yes, the teacher always tells you in the classroom. Take out your books and turn to page 40. Isn't it? Teacher always tells you in the class, take out your book. So what should the answer be? O U T out. Take out your books and turn to page 40. Next one. Has he taken off his coat? Has he taken off his coat? The answers given to you are yes, he has taken it off. Yes, he hasn't taken it off. So which should be the correct answer? Yes, he has taken it off. Yes, he hasn't taken it off. Yes, the correct answer is yes, he has taken it off. Has he taken off his coat? Yes, he has taken it off. Clear? Let's go to the next one. I hope you all are writing this down, children. Yes, have you all completed till here? Shall we move ahead? Okay. Have they taken out their books? Have they taken out their books? Yes, they have taken them out. Yes, they haven't taken it out. Now tell me which should be the correct option here. Have they taken out their books? Yes, they have taken them out. Yes, they haven't taken it out. So which should be the correct option? Yes, the right answer is yes, they have taken them out. Yes, when I'm saying yes, it should be have. It cannot be haven't, right? And then books, we are talking about many books. So we have used the word them. Yes, they have taken them out. Clear till here? Shall we move ahead, children? Okay. Has she blown up the balloons? Has she blown up the balloons? Yes, she has blown them up. Yes, she has blown it up. The two options are yes, she has blown them up or she, yes, she has blown it up. Which should be the correct answer? Yes, the first one, yes, 
she has blown them up. Why? Because again here we are talking about balloons, many balloons, right? So we we'll use them in place of balloons. Yes, she has blown them up. Clear? I hope you all have followed till here. Shall we move ahead? Okay. Now to the next part. That's our composition. Right? Composition, you have your informal letter and story writing. Again here, we had learned about the format of writing a letter and the format of writing a story. Right? Now here the questions are going to be asked to you on the basis of that. And again here, you are just going to select the correct option. Okay? In an informal letter, the date is written as 16 January 2021. Both the answers are same, 16 January 2021. But in the first option, there are no punctuations, no comma, no full stop. In the second option, there is a comma and a full stop. Now tell me which is the correct way of writing the date in an informal letter. Yes, in an informal letter, the date is written as the first option or the second option? Yes, the first option, right? In an informal letter, we don't use punctuation in the date. Okay, there won't be any commas or full stop. 16th January 2021. Yes, understood? I hope you all remember this. You all have gone through all these points. Yes, you all have practiced writing a letter. Correct? So, how do you write a letter? You don't write, you don't put any commas or you don't keep any full stop while writing the date. Correct? Let's move to the next one. State whether true or false. There's a statement given to you. You have to tell whether the statement is true or false. That means whether this is right or wrong. If it is right, means it is true. If it is wrong, means it is false. Yes? We can add commas at the end of the lines in address, date, salutation and subscription. Right? We can add commas at the end of the lines in address, date, salutation and subscription. Do you all remember? Yes? On the left hand side on the top, we used to write the address, date and then dear so and so. Yes. So, should we put commas there after every line? Is it right? We can add commas there? No, we cannot add commas there. Right? So, this statement is wrong. So, it is false. So, you will select false here. We can add commas at the end of the lines when address, date, salutation and subscription is wrong. So the correct answer is false. Clear? Let's move to the next one. Select the correct answers again. Answers to options are given. You are going to select the correct option. We should always write a story in the dash. We should always write the story in the present tense or past tense. That means you will write a story as if it's happening right now or it has already taken place. You're narrating a story that has already taken place, right? So the story is always written in past tense. Yes, we should always write a story in the past tense. Clear? I hope you all remember this. Yes, shall we move to the next one now? The correct way of writing the title of a story is The Greedy Dog is just an example of a title given to you. But see the way it is written. In the first one, only T is capital. In the second one, the T is capital, in greedy G is capital, in dog T is capital. So, which is the correct way of writing the title of a story? 
yes we have learned that by writing a title of a story all the main words in the title will begin with a capital letter do you all remember that while writing the title of a story all the main words in the title will begin with a capital red so letter yes so here which is the correct way of writing the title the second option is the correct one the correct way of writing the title of a story is the greedy dog the second option where the t is capital greedy g is capital and dog d is capital yes children is it clear i hope you all have followed everything and you all have written down everything yes so children we'll stop here that's all for today and all the best for all your exams do well children all the best sign up